Small engine driven garden machinery such as hedge cutters, chainsaws and strimmers normally have two stroke engines fitted for a very good reason. And here I'm going to explain four good reasons why. Number one, position. Now you'll have to excuse my drawings, I'm certainly no artist but I just want to make a point. If we look at the way we use strimmers, the way we use strimmers can result in varying positions. Let's just imagine being on this hillside. In one position we could be standing at the bottom of the hill using the strimmer in this way. Therefore the engine would be facing downwards. And if we were to stand at the top of the hill, engine facing upwards. And then of course in the usual position, taking a look at a hedge cutter, using it in the usual position, but also we use it sideways and we can use it vertical. So the engine can be in different positions all the time. And it's the same with the chainsaw handling. We've got the usual positions there, then we've got positions where the engine's facing up, and then we've got positions there where the engine's on the side, going to the side of the tree there. And these positions would be near impossible to perform if it wasn't for the good old two-stroke. Now there is some exceptions, particularly with strimmers, where there are four-stroke strimmers available, but generally and predominantly, these machines are two-stroke. The reason we can position two-strokes at these varying angles is all down to the way that the two-stroke actually works. It's not my intention on this particular video to explain how a two-stroke works exactly, but I just wanted to give a general reason why these engines can be used at different angles. And the main reason is that the inlet port here that brings in the air into the engine also brings in with it the fuel and the lubricating oil together. The carburetor would be somewhere here and the blue dashes is the air mixed with the red dashes which is the fuel. So that's air and fuel mixed by the carburetor coming in together and if we take a look on the red dashes, the fuel dashes, we can see there there are some other little dark red dashes which I've put there to indicate that oil is also there in with the fuel. So the total of what's coming in through the inlet is air, fuel and oil together and it's this oil that lubricates everything as it comes in with the fuel and air and it lubricates the crankshaft bearings there, the big end bearings there on the conrod and it also lubricates the small end bearings there at the bottom of the piston. So it doesn't matter which position this engine's in, the air, fuel and oil will come in together and lubricate it and there's nothing there that can spill out into other areas because it'll work this way in any position, upside down, to the side, any position. Now let's compare it to a four-stroke engine and when we do the first thing we see here is extra components of course there but also there's an oil reservoir here at the bottom of the crankshaft so in the crankcase area here we have a reservoir of oil and it's this reservoir of oil that stops us from using this engine at different positions and the way it lubricates itself is as the crankshaft turns it splashes the oil up onto the side of the cylinders there and the crankshaft lubricates its own bearings and the big end bearings there it all splashes up and also lubricates lubricates the small end bearings there at the gudgeon pin. It all splashes up. So the four stroke engine keeps its lubrication system separate to its ignition system. And here's the four stroke inlet. We've got air and fuel mixed here. So the carburetor would be here. An air and fuel mixture would come through past the inlet valve and into the cylinders for combustion. But it would be kept this side of the piston, leaving this side for lubrication. Now the problem with using four stroke engines on inclines such as this, is that this oil reservoir here, it would start to come this way the oil would, it would start to flatten out this way and as the engine turns it would splash it really hard up against the back of the piston and some oil would actually come past here and into the combustion area here and that would affect the combustion process of the engine and cause bellowing black smoke and coking up of the spark plug. If we were to turn it even further, there'd be that much oil coming right up here that so much had come past. As the piston comes that way, it would be hitting so much oil, slapping the oil if you like, preventing it from working efficiently. And also there'd be that much oil coming past here that combustion wouldn't take place. There would either be too much oil here to burn or there'd be way too much oil there. When the piston comes up, it would hydraulic lock. The oil would lock the piston, which would most certainly damage the internal parts of the engine, such as the conrod here. So there's no way we can use the standardized form of four stroke when we're looking at these sort of angles. Number two, they're lightweight. When we compare the two stroke and the four stroke, we can see immediately that there's more components here on the four stroke. If we look there, there's less components there on the two stroke. There's no valves, there's no cylinder head. On the four stroke we have, we've got the valves here, we've got the cams, we've got the cylinder head. There's a lot more weight. The components are a lot more heavyweight. Generally, the components of the two stroke, the piston, the conrod, the crankshaft, they're all made of a lighter metal. 
than the four stroke and that obviously contributes to its overall weight. Looking back here, weight is a very important factor, particularly when we're using these machines. It's not like we're using a, a lawnmower where we can push it across the ground. We're actually picking the machine up. So when we pick the machines up, we're obviously picking the engines up. So we need the engines to be as light as possible. And that brings us to number three, size. Similarly to mentioning with the weight, size is a big factor, of course. The very nature of the way we use these machines needs them to be as small and compact as possible. So we need to put a smaller engine in there as possible. Possible. Of course, as well as getting the best performance out of the engine, but they do need to be as compact as we can possibly get them. So if we look here again at the two engines, similar to weight, referring back to the extra components that are actually on a four-stroke, making them a lot bigger. As I mentioned before, we've got the cylinder head, we've got the valves, there'll be push rods and tappets that operate the valves, or there'll be cams like this. There'll just be more weight there on a four-stroke, and they're generally larger in size. Looking there at the two-stroke, because they've got so much less components by the way they work so much differently, these engines can be far more compact, ideal for what we need. And finally, number four, expense. Everything relates to price. We all want as much product as we can for our money, so expense is a big issue. And we can see here why, because obviously we've got more of a basic engine here, basic structure. It's going to cost less than all of this complicated stuff. We've got far less components there than we have on the four-stroke, so it's going to end up a cheaper product. This is another major factor why we use these engines on our garden machinery. So with advantages such as these, why don't we then fit two strokes to everything? Rotivators, lawnmowers, etc. and everything else for that matter. Well, the reason being is, although the four stroke isn't as dynamic in the way we can use it, and it's generally more expensive, they are known to be much more reliable and they run much smoother and they're generally more heavy duty. All these extra components, the valves and everything else, they really do work to make these engines run much better. And of course, we don't have to mix oil in with fuel as we do with the two-stroke. So it's a little quicker and easier that way. So overall these are my four reasons why we predominantly use two-stroke engines for small engine driven garden type machinery. I hope that's helped. I appreciate some will already know this knowledge and will be beneficial to others. Thanks very much for watching.